We're Sid and Mackie. For the past six years, we've been racing mountain bikes professionally and traveling in our van. However, 2020 threw us some major curveballs, mostly in the form of injuries. This winter, we spent most of our time in the gym, and since then, strength training has become a huge part of our training. Today, we're taking a big step and setting up our home gym. And then we're heading out to ride some of our favorite trails. Look at this beautifully cleared space underneath the carport. This is excellent. Now, we get to go check out all of our new gym equipment. Oh, I'm so excited. Me too. Also, cheers to the carport not looking like total redneck bill anymore. Thanks, I do Well done. Thank so, you. what is what? We are really excited to build up our home gym today for a couple of reasons. As you guys know, I have been doing a ton of strength work for the past eight, nine months. It's been very instrumental in my recovery. I think it is going to be part of my life and part of my training in a much bigger way going forward than it was in the past. I had a lot of muscular imbalances, postural issues, movement quality issues that had, some of which stemmed from this injury, some of which stemmed from previous injuries, some of which were just kind of how I was built as a human being. So strength work is super, super important to me and I really, um, I feel like a bit of an evangelist for it. I really think mountain bikers need to spend a little bit more time in the gym. And the thing is, we are mountain bikers, so we hate working out inside. So we're pretty excited to have an outdoor gym, at least for the summer here. The weather in New Mexico is beautiful in the summer. Like right now it is July 20th and I am wearing a sweater. So um, we don't really need to worry about being too hot. We don't really need to worry about bugs, except maybe like late in the evening. So outdoor gym is gonna be perfect and I just feel like I do better quality workouts outside. We haven't entirely figured out where this is gonna transition in the winter when we have three feet of snow up here, but um, we're gonna cross that bridge when we get here. Maybe the shed will be part gym, part bike storage. I don't know. Huge shout out to Grind Fitness. They make awesome, affordable gym equipment. <laughs> instructions are very good. Usually I hate following the instructions for something like this because it's like more confusing than just doing it, but this is helpful because there's so many pieces. But it is actually going like one step at a time. So next we're gonna do the next support points. Look what our squat rack came with. <laughs> it has instructions on the back. It says, Place this one sixth scale coach, Dr. Brett, wherever you most need motivation. For example, need to be reminded to eat right, throw him on the fridge. Or in the fridge, actually, it says. Worry mm -hmm. about hitting squat, proper squat depth, put him on your grind rack. Want to troll your friends, place him under their pillow. I think this definitely <laughs> needs to go under Remy's pillow, what do you think? <laughs> or keys. Or keys. <laughs> putting together our box. Kind of excited to have a proper box for box jumps since I was doing them upstairs recently. Up on two stairs? Yeah, it That's didn't funny. work.
Show him your one arm pull up, Bob. Nice, nice, Dad, nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have to zoom out because after the clip of your dad, no one will believe. <laughs> it's really impressive. Oh, yeah. Right. I do like five. I do at least five. With? This is the warming up part, Bob. Dada, you want us to hang on each side tens? of the bar, maybe? Let's do tens on each tens. side. Tens on each side, man. Good. Uh, you don't have to do anything until they yell. Oh! And then you help. Okay, take out the tens, put on 25. 25, all right. Oh boy. 25. So, how much I got on here then? 95 um, or something? That'd be, uh, yeah, 95. All right, buddy, you'd be behind him there. Especially when he, he feigns anything. a heart attack. Yeah. Oh, that one would be heavy. Or he has all a heart right, attack and none of us believe him. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do you want now? Now I want the 35s on. This is like push ups, right? So the push ups on the help. It is, yeah. This is a pushing. So roll it all the way forward. Okay. What do we got on here now? You got, uh, what, 50, 60, 70, 115. Oh, baby. All right. <sighs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so dramatic. Oh, All right. And I'm lifting it as the bar bending on the side. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, now you're talking. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Alright, here goes Bob getting ready to do a Okay, what am I doing here? Here's one uh, 90, 135. A 135 Ooh, bench baby. press at age 76. Let's <laughs> see if we can do it. Bo roll is, Bo it, roll is nervous. Roll and you gotta add in that I haven't lifted the weight like this. That's right. For what? Yeah. Roll for it, uh, but you do 100 push ups a day, oh, so, yeah, so, you know. Going the wrong way. There you go. Oh. All right, nice all right. Dana. Nice, Dana. Nice, Dana. We have this gym. No one's gonna want to do like my workouts with me though. They're all just gonna want to go for like one rep maxes all the time. Actually, though, <laughs> yeah. I've never done a one rep max of anything in my life. <sighs> okay, this is 95. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. See you do those spaghetti arms. Come on, spaghetti <laughs> 100 arms. Hundred pounds. Hundred pounds. You got this. All right, Sid. All right, Sid. You got it. No. Nope. Oh, got it. <laughs> <laughs> He couldn't quite get it. You want to try to do it? I gotta try to do it. See if you can tie dad or not. All right, what he's got to do to tie dad. Nice. All right. So you took a break, and now you're gonna go again and try to get the the 145. I'm trying to, man. I want the gold. He wants the gold. He wants the gold. If that's the case, I'm resting up. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Mm. Whoa! Oh, you got he it! Got All right. right! Bob, age 76, not to be outdone by his 23-year-old son, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> returns to the bench.
Aren't you turning 78 this year? No, 77. 77. All right. 155. Sorry, 150. Nope. <laughs> All right, 145 All right. it is. We know what the limit is there, baby. <laughs> Nice job, Keith. Come on, Keith. Come on. Push, push, push. You got it so far. <laughs> oh, no problem. All right. Okay, 165. If I can do this, I beat my siblings. Oh, yeah. Those priorities are. Okay, that was easy, so let's. Now this is 165. Wait a minute. 45 plus 15 is 60. 120, 165. This is 165. What was the last one? Must have been 155. 55 doubled is 110. Yeah, that was 155. Okay. Okay. Cool. So this is 165. Okay. Yeah, you got you got cocky there for a second. <laughs> Come on, come on! Ow. Ugh. Dang it! Today we are at Glorieta Camps in Glorieta, New Mexico, which is right east of Santa Fe. Today I'm gonna ride my acoustic bike first. And just to like get this out of the way, yes, it's very muddy. I rode it at Angel Fire on Thursday, it just rained, and then I did exactly what I tell you guys not to do on our other channel. If you have dried mud on your bike, which you should never let happen. And at this point, it seems kind of silly because we're about to go ride again. It's about to get dirty again. So, um, I'm not gonna wash it. We did clean off my chain and put some chain lube on, so. This is how you fall into a spiral of dew, mm -hmm. just saying. Yeah, no, it's a bad precedent to start because if we're gonna ride again tomorrow, then it'll be like, why? why wash it this afternoon? Why wash it this afternoon? Yeah. yeah. My plan is to ride the I feel so pretentious when I say acoustic bike, <laughs> but I don't really know how, to, I feel like it's weird to be like normal bike, yeah, other right. bike. Yeah. Anyway, the acoustic bike, I'm gonna ride that first. We're gonna stay in the lowlands and then I'm gonna hop on the e-bike to do some of the stuff that requires more climbing. That's sort of what I've been doing for the past few weeks is riding the acoustic bike at Angel Fire, riding it for like the beginning of rides very slowly easing back into riding and hopefully be training sometime in the not too distant future. I will say this has gone a lot slower than I thought it would, but it turns out it's just, I don't know. It's, it's like- It's just the way it is. Yeah, I mean, I'm starting with zero fitness, so I'm working with that. And also the fact that I still do get some pain from the nerve if I overdo it, so just, carefully treading that line and trying to add the riding back in. So far we haven't had to go backwards, so slow forwards is better than like fast and then backwards. So that's the strategy. Did feel like I would be farther along by mid-July, but um, here we are. All right, what's the plan? Had the green loop. Oh, now you've got the creaky wheel. It's a good thing we know how to fix that now. When we were at Nationals, I uh, talked to one of the Shimano Rick mechanics there. Uh, he's actually the regional tech rec, but he, uh, I thought it was the cassette that was creaking. He's like, no, that's the wheel. And he showed me how to fix it. So we will have a video in the near future on the Sid Fixes Bikes channel on how to fix a creaky Shimano wheel. Ooh 
a crazy like surfboard rock. Oh yeah. Must be some kind of sandstone or something. Yeah. It's funny, after riding my single speed a certain amount, yeah. I find I have to, uh, I catch myself pushing too big of a gear. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to like force myself to spin a lighter gear because there is no need. Yeah, that was only 28 minutes. All right, Sid rode the acoustic bike. Now we're swapping over to the e-bike and putting on some knee pads because for any of you who've ever ridden at Glorietta, you will know this place can be very gnarly. So um, I decided to go for the lighter weight knee pads. Sid's going for the heavier duty ones, which actually maybe is the way to go because they have really good ventilation in there. Yeah, I actually find these more comfortable for whatever reason. Hmm. I think I'm gonna stick with it because I had them on already. This is carrying me up Glorietta's new climbing trail that takes you all the way to the top of Jagged Axe, which is awesome because previously you had to ride a road up to Jagged Axe and then do some hiking, and it was doable, but it was a pretty heinous climb. And this so far is a awesome climb. Yeah, exactly. We haven't done too much climbing yet. But it's a green climbing trail. And in my experience, this crew, when they rate something, they are correct about the rating. So I'm going to say it's actually a green climbing trail. Whoa, check out these rocks. So cool. Sid's making me work for this climb. How you guys doing? Man, she's making me work. Yeah, that was, that was good, man. Good luck, bro. <laughs> yeah, that was a uh, that was a little blue section.
Yep, jagged axe. Pretty good view. We have like a 350 degree view here. Minus the 10% of trees. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a very long time since we rode this trail, which is a bummer because it's probably one of my favorite trails of all time. Um, super rocky, it's got some really cool features. It's fun to try to race, although very hard to try to race. But yeah, we just haven't been up here for a long time. We've done Chili Dog a couple times um, when we've been here recently, but this is our first time up here in a while. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, it's gotten real beat up. <laughs> Let's see how the old notch is looking. Oh, it actually looks pretty good. All right, the notch. trail is. I think it's over here. I know, I know it's around here somewhere. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so we rode Jagged Axe, and frankly, it was harder than I remember. So, either I'm out of practice, which is quite possible because I haven't really been racing enduro, but going to Angel Fire, I did not feel like things were harder than I remembered, and that included their steep double blacks. They felt similarly difficult. Maybe, I think maybe I even felt slightly better on them than I had before. So that makes me think, hopefully, that Jagged Axe has just gotten harder, which kind of makes some sense because it has been, I think it's been four years since I rode Jagged Axe. 
and four years is a lot of time for erosion to happen. And that trail has so many like rocks that are fairly close together that I think in the past were filled with dirt and now are not filled with dirt. So that's my hope at least is that it actually has gotten harder. I think also another lap on it would help because I would kind of remember what was coming. So we are not gonna go up again, but I think if uh, we decide to ride here tomorrow, I will probably go ride Jagged Axe again because yeah, it definitely was hard. All right, bike riding. <laughs> what are you doing? It's hot. <laughs> I want these shorts off. I want everything off. I'm so tired. Why? I don't know, I feel lame because I was on an e-bike the whole time, but I think, I don't know, I did a gym workout yesterday. And my oh, triceps. triceps. Not that much, but it doesn't take much, apparently. <laughs> my triceps. Like I tried to like adjust my visor on my helmet and I couldn't do it. <laughs> I don't know, I kind of sucked it up descending. We also realized that my shock does not have enough air in it, which we should have corrected before. Keep lining them up. Oh, okay, <laughs> fine. Just lining up the excuses. One of those days where you just like need excuses for your mental health. We need to like make some excuses. Because my options and are I... either I just terribly suck at riding bikes or it's my bike's fault. For you. It is time for some epic sandwiches. We've got bread, hot dill pickles, which are delicious, pickled red onions, black forest ham, hummus, salad, and an avocado. I think it's gonna be pretty delish. What do you think? It's <laughs> good. Okay, good. Nice. Nice. Good job. <laughs> you can tell you're standing when you yeah, stop you like that. Yeah, you gotta keep doing. You gotta keep going. 